Hey, this is Andrew Laram for Conscious Life News and I am very, very honored to be here today with world-renowned astrologer Susan Miller. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> it's, I really appreciate you spending this time with me to discuss a little bit about astrology. Um, I think you're one of the world's leading in <laughs> astrology. <laughs> you have to ask my readers. <laughs> I don't know. Just hardworking, a uh, little astrologer. <laughs> a huge following. Now, could you, um, I think a lot of people do understand about astrology, but could you break down mm -hmm. what is astrology? Astrology is the study of cycles, of planetary cycles, some that will repeat in your life and some that you will Anything that I write, in astrologyzone.com, mm. my website, you could look up in a book because I'm very transparent and I'm a classicist, so I go by what the ancients wrote, but also I have to integrate the modern planets as well, you know, of uh, Neptune and, and Uranus and Pluto. You know, those were discovered. Later. Oh, astrology is based on math, and mm. when people say, well, where do you get the math from? NASA knows where all the planets are and they publish tables, but you can get it from other places too. It's public information. It's called an ephemeris. You can go online and look at the tables and you can see where Jupiter is and where Mars and Uranus is. And when a planet starts talking to another planet at a certain angle and same degree, when it hits, that's a conversation and every sign will feel it, but in a different way. And my job is to show you how you will feel. Now astrology can tell you when to act, so they're great for, astrology is great for planning. Mm. You want to make your biggest initiations at the best possible time when you're likely to succeed. There's no guarantees in astrology. You know, people always say, oh, don't tell me any bad news, that I'm going to be in an accident or something. It's not like that. I could say, you're a little accident prone today, which is actually true. <laughs> uh, so I wouldn't go bungee jumping today, I, and especially with Mercury retrograde, you can have mechanical failure, and here you're putting your whole life on that cord, you know, so I, I would say maybe next month would be better, the second half of next month. So things like that, you know, if you, I'm looking at probability bars, you know, I'm your pilot in the airplane, you need to get somewhere. You need to succeed on some front. I have my map. It can also help you see your own talents. I think that's my favorite thing to find in a chart. Talent. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've asked a person, um, for example, did you ever want to write a book? Oh yes, but no one in my family writes and that's like a pipe dream. I'm like, no it isn't. You have talent. Do you write for your work? Do you do any reports? Even if they're marketing reports or any kind of reports, yes. Do you like to write? Yes. Well, if you wrote every day, it gets easier and easier. Mm -hmm. So maybe you should set aside time every morning or every night to write a little work on that screenplay or that novel. I mean, we're in 2014. It's been a really intense year so far. We're halfway through. I didn't even want to tell people about how, <laughs> you know, people are saying Happy New Year and I'm thinking, no. <laughs> but next year is going to be better. It's going to be better. But I'll tell you why this year was so hard. We had a parade of retrograde planets. Mm -hmm. First from December 21st last Christmas mm -hmm. through the end of January, Venus was retrograde. When a planet is retrograde, it's weak and it doesn't give you any of their powers. And here I'm thinking, Christmas parties, New Year's Eve parties, Hanukkah happened to fall at the same time for the, our Jewish friends, and, and you have Venus retrograde. When Venus retrogrades, it's like work, don't play. And you're like, oh. And if you, if you get married with Venus retrograde, Ooh. there might not be as much affection in the marriage, mm. because you're putting that DNA into the, you know, the date of the wedding. But very few people get married in January. Um, then, Mercury went retrograde February 7th to the 28th. Look at these dates that I'm giving you. March 1st, Mars went retrograde. Oh my goodness. Now, now, Mercury is the planet of contracts. You couldn't sign contracts or buy electronic items because it rules the moving parts and machines. Mm -hmm. And marriage is a contract, so yeah. you don't want to get married uh, with that. Or your judgment is off, and you don't think that. And it also means that the wind is changing direction, and had you known, what was coming next, and it's not apparent yet. Everything looks the same. 
But the minute I tell my readers, you know, Mercury's retrograde, that's a signal. The, everything is changing and the, the floor you're standing on is shifting. So don't make decisions now. You need to wait a little bit. Now Mars is the booster rocket that takes that heavy rocket into space. Mm -hmm. And then when the rocket begins to orbit properly, Mars says, okay, I'm leaving now. You don't need me. I have another assignment by the universe. So if you have plans to launch with Mars retrograde, March 1st to May 19th, wow. nothing was moving. We were going through glue. Yes, you could make some progress. I signed off on the writing of the apps. I mean, you can't stop your life. Mm -hmm. At least Mercury wasn't retrograde. Right? I had a good day. You know, I, I picked a good day. But um, things were going to be slow, mm -hmm. you know. And when Mars wakes up, he's groggy, like a lot of people are. I need my coffee. I'm like, Mars, we've waited two months. Could you, could you move along? No, I'm walking into furniture. He's like, he's like a little drunk Mars. You know? yeah. And I looked at the degrees, and little Mars doesn't straighten out until like July. And I'm like, oh, I can't even tell my readers this. They're going to jump out the window. And then Mercury went retrograde on June 7th until July 1st. Yeah. So for all practical purposes, the year starts on July 1st. Oh, my because when you have retrograde planets, you're finishing up old business from last year or plans that you had hoped to launch and you did launch them, but they were fledgling and you had to continue to work on them. Or your editor brought back the manuscript and said, develop this character more. Mm. Or the, the client has changed direction on another, you know, a different type of occupation, you're going to have to backtrack, or the mainframe blew up, do this again. Whatever it is, you were backtracking a lot and finishing up things that started in 213. But now, now we Thank can start God. new. Yeah, so we're, we're about to go into July by the time it's out. July is the be best July. month of the year, and the luckiest day of the year is July 24th when Jupiter meets with the Sun. If you look in the encyclopedia, Jupiter almost became the Sun. It, it missed it on a technicality. And it, if, let's say, you put all the planets on a table, mm -hmm. he would be a cantaloupe. And all the other little guys would be like a walnut or a plum or, <laughs> you know, nothing the size of, the, of Jupiter. And in astrology, he is the giver of gifts and luck, the cornucopia. If he had an office, he wouldn't have a nameplate, Jupiter. It would say, more. He will give you more. You want money? I'll give you more money than you ever thought possible. You want a new apartment? I'll give you a big apartment. So when I tell you where Mars is going, you uh -huh. must not settle. I will be talking a lot about that in July, and okay. I will be giving you all. I talked about it in June. I only write once a month, mm -hmm. 48,000 words. But, and I give you some idea of it, but by July you'll really have a, a full, you know, table of contents of where you should put your energy. What's interesting on this month, on July, so we have the luckiest day of the year on the 24th, and on the 25th, the 26th, sorry, we have a new moon. New mm -hmm. moons are doors that open. Now, some of them are a little mean, but this one's really nice. Okay. This one is the nicest one, and so like cancer should ask for a raise. And, um, you know, all the different signs have something like a, uh, uh, Aquarius, the best marriage aspect. Aries, mm -hmm. the best love aspect. And I've not talked about love for Aries in a long time. If they said, well, I found someone, love grows. If you're married even, love grows. You might have a baby because it's the same house. Time to get pregnant. A lot of people put that off during the recession, didn't think they could afford a family. Now they can start conceiving. It's July is fantastic. Okay, so this is good news. This is very good news. October does have Mercury retrograde again, but it's a kachu compared to what we have. What we've just been You know, and we do have two eclipses, but they're not mean like the April 15th and the April 20th. We had a cardinal cross. Yeah. And it meant that all the, the planets that were in those signs were at 90 degree angles from each other. And that meant there was no escape. It was a perfect box. Mm -hmm. So it was like a fly in a hot pot going off the walls looking yeah. desperately for an escape. That's how it felt. <laughs> and it fosters change. It's like always in my head this year I had a picture of a little girl in a white dress with curly blonde hair like a little angel holding a white dish saying, you're not listening. 
and smashing the dish, smashing the molds. Something has to change and you're not getting it. The universe has been telling you and you're not getting it. So now the universe is going to take over. Sometimes the universe will wait patiently and if you're not doing it, the universe will do what you couldn't do for yourself by creating these very tough aspects. Well, eclipses are very important to watch. They're usually four a year. Sometimes we have eight in one year. Recent years we've had eight. And what do the eclipses uh, exactly Eclipses mean? force you to look at a weak link in your life. Oh, interesting. And I didn't know that I was getting sick in my intestines. And you know, when an eclipse hits, no matter what it is, you may get downsized from your job, your boyfriend may break up with you, or you may get the job of your dreams and you have to fly to London to, you know, to do an overseas assignment. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, you can't say to the eclipse, this is a really bad time, can we just table this? <laughs> the universe laughs and pushes your back, I'm like, ho, 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 You're, you have to drop every, I canceled all my appearances, and I just talked to the doctor, you know what I mean? And, and I'm, the universe is on your side, and you have to remember that. Like the universe looks down, oh, here's little Mary. She's been in that job for 10 years. They haven't given her a raise in five years. You know what, I've been busy. I really need to get her out of that job. Okay, she's gonna be downsized. Now she is gonna cry for two months, but I have this great job lined up for her. She just gets out there and looks right away. She'll get that job and she won't even remember the two months that she was so scared. So the universe is on your side. It takes away the weak links. Interesting. And that's what come up in the eclipses. Yes. Yeah, so think about April 15th. Yeah. Not everybody felt it. You won't feel it if you don't have a planet at the degree that I'm talking about. You know, that degree was 25 degrees. It was a full moon, so something was really cresting. Mm. And it was a very mean one. We have to have faith mm -hmm. that the universe knows what's best for us. And it's like a heat-seeking missile. If you were supposed to feel an eclipse and you say no, and you waited the extra month and still no, it meant you didn't have any eclipse. And the universe couldn't find anything to show you, or if it did, it was so mild that you hardly noticed it. So, okay, so going to the signs, can you tell us what the sun sign means or represents, what the moon sign means or represents, and then again for the rising sign? The rising sign is the one that most people would guess if they were at a party. Okay. And it does dictate the profession. Okay. So people think, oh, she writes a lot. She might be Virgo or she might be Gemini. Well, it's Gemini. Um, the... It's, it's really the, uh, the qualities that you gravitated to naturally. Mm -hmm. I sometimes, a little tongue in cheek, say on Twitter, God picked your sun sign, you picked your rising sign. Uh. <laughs> it's not God, I think he picked both, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, this is, explains why all Aries aren't alike, all Geminis aren't alike, mm -hmm. and so forth. Your sun sign is, the sun is the center of our solar system so it has a unique place mm. the other planets march around the Sun nobody marches around Venus Mars or Mercury yeah. so you have two charts you have your Sun sign chart and you have your rising sign chart and you must read both and you say oh I found out my rising sign is the same as my Sun sign that means you were born at dawn when the Sun was coming up over the eastern horizon because that is why we call it rising what is what sign is rising over the eastern horizon as you're being born? And that's why we need the time of birth. And then the moon is the fine-tuning to your character, the repository of your dreams and your emotions and your memories and how you viewed your mother. Mm -hmm. It's also your domestic condition, but it also describes talents. I have the moon in Virgo, so I'm, you knew that. Yeah. I write so much, you know, and I like to write. You know, and these are flexible sides, but Gemini and Virgo are very flexible. Mm. So I'm not rigid if you, you say, you forgot something in your your report this month. I'm like, oh, well you better tell me so I won't forget it again. I'm just flexible. Yeah. So yeah. the sun is the core of who you yes. are. Yes. The rising is more career the, and the face. Well, but it's also the face you give the world. Yes, yeah. that's very yeah. well put. And 
The moon comes out at night, so it's the fine-tuning, mm. like as if I could zip you open and learn more about you. So it's important to read the sun sign and the rising sign. And How now, important is it to read the moon uh, the moon now, sign? In India, the mm -hmm. moon takes precedent over the sun in Vedic astrology. I do classic Western astrology. And just like East-West, uh -huh. they, they emphasize the moon, we emphasize the sun. Mm. And moon is female and, and sun is male in a chart, a mother and father. Mm -hmm. But I have found if you're born at night and there's a big growing uh, push and movement in astrology, I, mean, I see it with my own children because they're both born at night. The moon is so important if you're born at night. Okay. So um, if you're born after the sun went down, you may say, well, I wasn't really born at night. I was born at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, if the sun went down, you can look it up on the internet when the sun went down on the day you were born. They have all kinds of information. You can even find out if it was raining or snowing yeah. or whatever. Um, then you should read for the moon, and just for a while. Now, I write a lot, so I don't want to torture people. Read the sun, read the rising sun, but maybe read the, the summary for six months and see if it resonates with you. Here's what I found, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Chrissy, my daughter, is a Pisces. Mm -hmm. She is engaged to Leo, isn't that funny? He has the sign of a, in the name of a sign. Of, yeah. And Leo is a little Leo, and that's not a traditional pairing, fire and water. Interesting. But she has the moon in Aquarius, mm -hmm. and she's born at night. And she has three planets in Aquarius in the house of love and creativity. She's born with that. Wow. Leo is perfect for her. I can't tell you to marry that man, move cross country, take that job. That's always going to be your decision. I can say, here's a discussion you should have with your fiancé about money, or yes, you're very, both of you spend money very differently and I think you should have that discussion, yeah. or whatever it is. It looks like he's going to want to live in the city and you're going to want to live in the country. Did you talk about that? It's really you know? interesting because also I know um, in the Indian culture, you know, you get married, before you get married, you have the charts checked, you know? Mm -hmm. my, my mother, everybody that I know is really <laughs> big on this. Well, yes, but I don't believe that anybody cannot get over incompatibility. Mm. I believe anybody, let me say it more positive way, anybody can get along with anybody else with a little bit more effort. And I can tell you where the, the little fault lines lie mm. to help you with communication. A lot of love is based on communication and mm. clear communication. And when you're dating, keep an open mind. Give that person a chance. Guys are telling me, girls are saying, do you want a baby, you know, on the first <laughs> date? You know, the problem is that we have Google now, so you can find out everything that you would have taken eight dates to find out yeah. about before you've ever stepped out the door. And, and sometimes that information isn't even correct. So, you really need to give that person a chance. Yes. I mean, it's so exciting when you meet somebody that you can connect with mm -hmm. and and really care about and you know be, enjoy being with. I um, I think that people are being expedient and trying to compress the whole dating. The dating part is supposed to be the most fun. Yeah, that's supposed to be the foundation that you always remember as you grow old and think back when you first met. So true, and a lot of it's being missed out. I tell my friends in modern day, you see, you hear this now. Oh, yeah. I'm never dating another Scorpio. Well, I call that Rachel profiling. Yeah. Just because one Scorpio gave you a problem, it doesn't mean that one twelfth of the population is going to. Yeah. No, I mean, have an open mind. The love of your life may be the next Scorpio you meet. So, mm -hmm. don't don't put labels on. Just, you know, I have a friend who says. Do the chart. I found out his birthday on Facebook. Do the chart before I even go out. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. You have to give him a chance. Yeah. I'm not going to know everything about that person. Mm -hmm. That person is an expert on their life. Listen, let the flower un unfold. Mm -hmm. And when you have a specific question you want to ask me, like, oh, his ex-wife, she's really in his life a lot, and am I going to have problems with her? Mm -hmm. That I can find in a chart. And that's a legitimate concern yeah. if he's still very tied up with her and not defending you. One of the most important things is to know who you are first. 
Yes. There's no point in trying to figure out who your right match is and then chasing them down if you have yeah. no idea who you are. You have to be, you can't have somebody complete you. Yeah. You have to be complete. And you can't change anyone. I always say to couples, you better like the things that drive you crazy in the beginning because they'll only grow a little bigger. <laughs> Don't think that you can change people because it's harder. They have to want to change. Yeah. People can change, but they have to want to. So it has to come from within them, and they have to do it for themselves, not for you. As an astrologer, it's very, like you said, maths and science, and mm -hmm. you know, you, it's very factual information you're breaking mm -hmm. down and interpreting. Mm -hmm. So for you, so you are religious, and what well, is people the see it as incongruous. Yeah, how do they work together for you? No, to me, God created astrology. Mm -hmm. He created a system that we would be systematically rewarded and challenged, mm -hmm. you know, and that through randomness, because there's a lot of randomness in the universe, but random isn't always so random, you know, when you look at particles and so forth. That's a whole other yeah. <laughs> interview. But um, in the Middle Ages, the astrologers were thrown out of the church, so that's where people are getting that you can't be religious and an astrologer. People were blaming planets for their bad behavior. Why did you steal your neighbor's pig? Um, Saturn was retrograde. No, 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 you're a bad person. Why did you take your neighbor's wife? Oh, she was pretty and Venus was retrograde. No, 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 no. <laughs> Every religion is based on the fact that there is no predestination and in astrology there's no predestination. I can tell you when you will have an opportunity or a challenge, mm -hmm. but it's up to you to fight it or to take advantage of it. Astrology shows you your feelings about religion. The ninth house mm -hmm. is the dogma of your religion. The twelfth house is your faith. Mm -hmm. The twelfth house is ruled by Pisces. Pisces is such an intuitive sign. It just, it is the, the water, the ocean. You can't put a fence in the ocean. It's where all souls mingle as one. All nationalities, through time and space, you can be an astrologer and still go to church, you yeah. know, or synagogue, or, or the mosque, whatever your religion. It is. It was set up by God, in my opinion, to help us, you know. So. So there's no need for a separation. The faith and and whatever religion you take, if any, and astrology can be yes. integrated. Yes, can be integrated. I yes. mean, you know, personally I'm a big believer in Christ and, you know, it was yes. following the stars and so on yeah. that, that they even got to where he was. So I yeah. think... Oh yeah, it's, the it's three integrated. wise men were following Mars, Saturn and Jupiter and together they were very bright. Now yeah. you actually shared something a little earlier with me um, about something you read in Forbes magazine. Oh yeah. Could you they share? said that there are more Pisces millionaires and then the next year they said Pisces and Virgo millionaires uh. than any other sign. And I believe it's because these two signs are the most unmaterialistic of all the signs. They don't care about money, they care about the product. Mm. And because they put such focus on the product, Steve Jobs was Pisces, February 24th, 1955. Because they put so much emphasis on that, they make a great product mm. that people want, and the money just comes. But Pisces and Virgo are the two religious signs. The virgin holding the wheat. The uh, Pisces is the feet, the washing of the feet, the fish. The Christians put the fish over their door to say they were believers of Christ but it extends to all all religions. Mm -hmm. there, there are different symbolisms that I don't even know. Yeah. Actually, if you're seeing this and you want to get in touch with me, <laughs> let me know what they are. Um, and it's just magical. And they have faith, yeah. you know. And I love Steve Jobs. He said, I don't do any market research. How would people know if they want what I have to sell them if I haven't invented it yet? Yeah. You know, I believe people are really, um, it is, really coming up in sight today about doing the work that they're destined to do in their soul purpose. Oh. And, and you know, I think that's one of the things that keeps us going when, you know, when there are challenges is because you know that that is what you're meant to be doing. Well, you know, you're lucky if you can find it. When I was very little, I'd be five mm -hmm. or six, my mother gave me a lot of time because my sister was just born when I was four and a half. 
and she would sit on the floor and do blocks with me. I had like the perfect childhood, really, yeah, except for my bad leg. Yeah. I had the perfect childhood. <laughs> and we're doing blocks. She said, Susie, did you ever think about why you were born? And here I'm very little. Wow. And I'm looking at my mother, smiling at me with these big blue blueberry eyes, I would always call it. And I said, no, mommy, no. She said, well, you should. You Amazing. must find the purpose in your life. That's our job. All of us must find the purpose that you could give just so that you can contribute and feel good about it. Wow. And I found that through creativity, I taught my children, no matter how much you pay it, it gets old. Yeah. Creativity never gets old. If you can say, I made that, I wrote that, I did that, or, or for some people, athletes, I ran that race. There's such pride and happiness that comes from that. It stays with you. And you can build on that. You know, you get more proficient in your creativity. And I said, that is the key to the universe. Mm. And she told me when I was five years old about death. Mm. And I thought, this is shocking and not good news. <laughs> and I remember looking down at a dollar bill that was on her bureau and I said, um, did George Washington die? She said, he did. I said, oh my gosh, even him. She said, no, everybody. I said, you too? Me? Yes. That's why you have to make your life meaningful. Mm. Well, um, my mother was an astrologer. I, I lost my mother a year and a half ago, which is really tough, because I loved little mom so much. It was like a Socratic discussion that we would have with each other and talk about why things happen, why difficult things happen, why we're challenged. So it was fun. She taught me. She didn't want to teach me. My mother was very good with astrology. Before I was born, she was dating my father for 10 years. <laughs> she was dating a long time. But my uncle was in, in Normandy, and they hadn't heard from him. And my mother would always be made fun of by my father. He would brag her about her, her silly little hobby. And she said, Peter's missing. I will work on the charts and I'll tell you what's what's going on with him. I said, oh, okay. So she worked and worked and worked on the charts. And you do a horary chart for the time the question is asked. Mm -hmm. But you also take the chart of the person that is missing. And she came back to my father and said, you're going to hear on Friday, this and this day, at, nine uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning. And he said, you're already wrong, the mail comes at 9. And she said, but it's 11. Uh -huh. But that day happened to be a Friday when my father had an Italian specialty grocery store. He would be out with the truck making deliveries. So you know how somebody tells you 11 o'clock? So he walked into the store and looked at the Tetley tea clock and he's like, it's exactly, oh my god, it's 11 o'clock. This is the day she said I'd hear. So he goes around the corner of the counter and is looking at the mail and there's nothing there and his partner, my uncle Charles, Charlie is on the phone and he's motioning to Charlie anything about Peter and Charlie says, oh, and he goes, but there's nothing here. He goes, under the cash register, lift up where the bills are. You know those old fashioned ones, not uh -huh. what we have now. And there was a telegram and that my uncle was alive. It was right, mm. right to the minute. So my father never teased her again. <laughs> I, bet, I bet that stopped too. Never, <laughs> yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> Later, when I was 10, I said, what will I be when I grow up? Can you tell from those charts? And she said, well, yes, you're going to write. Mm. Nobody in our family writes. You're going to write. I have Aquarius on the Midheaven, mm. which is at the very top where 12 is on a round clock. And she said, that's what you grow into when you get to be about 40 or very close to it. She said at that time, some newly invented form of communication, mm -hmm. so new we don't know the name of it yet. <laughs> will change the way you work and be the channel in which you make your ultimate contribution to the world. I'll never forget that sentence. Wow. Um, I, uh, I was very sick, born with a very serious birth ailment in my leg and hip, the whole thigh. 
and doctors couldn't figure out what it was. But I would get attacks now and then, about once a year. When I was 14, I got a big attack, and one by one, the nurses came in to pray with me. I had an Irish nurse, a Jewish nurse, a black nurse, an Asian nurse. I mean, it was like the United Nations, but it is New York. And I, I thought, why were they so good to me? And looking back, and I think because I was 14 years old facing a, a catastrophic surgery if I was going to have to go downstairs. Each one came in and I told the Irish nurse, we have to pray to St. Jude, mm -hmm. the, the saint of hopeless cases. Oh. So we did, and even the Jewish nurse did. And they were so nice, they were praying with me. I was doing Hail Marys and All Fathers. And because of that bare, bold light, they were like in the chiaroscuro, mm. like the Italian paintings with the black background because it was night. And I was to see beauty in faces that was far more beautiful than the fashion magazine. And you know I work in fashion. Yeah, you love fashion. <laughs> well, I love fashion. But, but I saw beauty that night that was never to leave me. When I sit on the subway and I look at people's faces, I'm like, that was somebody's baby that grew up to look just like this. But I also saw love and caring. They cared what happened to me. I was so touched by this. So now my doctor's back, you know, it's a, an hour later, and he said, this does not happen. I'm like, what doesn't happen? He said, you have perfect blood pressure. Wow. I mean, it's impossible to go from where you were to perfect. He said, what are you doing? I said, we're, well, we're all praying. Amazing. He said, oh, and most doctors don't believe in prayer? He said, whatever you're doing, keep it up. <laughs> That's what they said. I said, well, I intend to. It's really beautiful because I see you've obviously been through so much, <laughs> so, so much. I mean, well, from such a young age and with a lot of physical <laughs> challenges that you've had to overcome and you still have this beautiful, positive, <laughs> happy energy. You know, what's the secret to that? Like, what is no, it that keeps you going? No, you just have to... Um, sometimes things get so bad that they get funny. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> I know that. Like, if I wrote this in a book, my publisher would send it back. You know, and um, well, let me give you an example. I couldn't call on the art directors when I was so sick in the house for a year. Mm. So one of my best friends said, send out an industry letter. She said, I've got a list of every art director all over the place, and especially in New York. So you send them a letter and you say, thank you for all the donations of blood. But I said, they didn't give me any. She said, that doesn't matter. They would have. I said, okay. <laughs> say, thank you. I've had 17 blood transfusions during that operation. I've had 40 in my life. And I never got hepatitis C. Thank God. And many people, look, Elizabeth Blazer died with one blood transfusion after giving birth. So I'm a very lucky girl, and I'm never going to forget that. But I thank them all for the outpouring of support. <laughs> People are calling me, I didn't know you were sick. I would have given you blood. I said, I know you would have given me blood. It's really an attitude of gratitude, even though nobody <laughs> even knew. And I knew they were. Yeah. And they started to come to me. They visited me. Our directors came up to see me. And that's how I survived. I remember uh, at one point, I couldn't sell any, any you know, assignments. This was after I got well and I was out. And the children were eating. And I was waiting for them to get done. And they're swinging their, their little legs. You know, Chrissy's, Chrissy's 10, Diana's 7. And I said, I may have to sell my engagement ring wow. to pay for your tuition. I haven't sold anything for David. I was an agent for commercial photographers. And I, I may have to take you out of the school. And this is breaking my heart because you have all your little friends and your, your network is there. And Diana's playing with her peas and carrots a little bit, and Chris is pretty much done. And she says, she looks at me, she tilts her head. She said, are you saying that you've run out of ideas? Ha, huh, that'll be the day. Oh, and I'm like in shock. I don't expect her to say that. Not you. You never run out of ideas. And little Diana, who's followed Chrissy around like a little shadow, went, Chrissy's yeah. right. <laughs> Chrissy's right. And I'm like, oh my god. And they're skipping into their room because they're done. And I'm what just happened? So I thought, well, maybe they were just trying to be positive for me. So I went in when they were sleeping, and they're kind of sleeping together. They're two little beds that they pushed together. 
and they're like little cherubs. They're not tossing and turning like I am. Mm -hmm. They're they're fine. And I'm like, they trust me that much. Two weeks later, I sold Coca-Cola for every nation in the world. It was the biggest job I had ever estimated for McCann Erickson. It paid for everything. Yeah. And literally from famine to feast. You know, there are times when people have dry spells, so you have to keep praying. Mm -hmm. I was having rapid heartbeat, but my doctor was saying, you're just too nervous. I've tested you, you're fine. And you just keep praying. The Dalai Lama says that every hundred years, our eyes are opened and we make an advance. And I was just having this discussion today with a filmmaker at lunch. I said, I, every once in a while I get a philosophical idea that I chew on, like yeah. when I'm walking around or, you know, I don't know how to drive so I walk. <laughs> and, so, and I said, what are we invisible to? Mm. You know, like in a in hundred years ago, there were different laws and women didn't vote and, well, maybe they did, but they were just starting. They didn't understand that women were smart. What are we not seeing today that a hundred years from now I'll say, ah, oh, that was the dark ages. And what do you think that is? I don't know. Oh, I don't know because it. it's invisible. <laughs> the collective conscious is changing. Things yeah. are shifting. Can you tie that in with astrology and what you see that's happening now to the collective conscious and where we're well, headed? Well, each planet contributes its gifts. Mm -hmm. Saturn was in uh, Libra for the first time in 29 years. It's now in Scorpio, but it was in Libra. And that's when we started to have gay marriage. And Libra is the sign of marriage. So our concept of what is marriage was due to change, because Saturn was forcing us to look and make a new structure. Okay. Um, now it's in Scorpio, which was pedophiles and sexual um, Secrets, I think. You know, but, but it's also like all these women on campuses, the good colleges, have not been reporting the rapes and have been dismissing these women. And now they're all coming together and saying, we're not going to be silent anymore. We're not going to be embarrassed by it. It's not our fault. We were raped. And Yale, Harvard, all these big colleges. I mean, it's going across like in India and in other countries where they're oh, speaking yes. up now that this isn't okay, even though culturally it's been made okay. Oh, yeah, that's even that's even more in some of the other countries, yeah. yeah. So there's yeah. that, so how long do you think that, how long is Saturn going to stay in Scorpio? Um, until um, the end of this year, mm -hmm. then it slides, he's moving so fast, he forgets, and he's, it's like somebody running around home base in the baseball game. He's running to first base. Yeah. Like, where are you, Saturn? Will you come back here? So he runs right into Sagittarius, and it isn't until June he's like, I didn't finish Scorpio. Oh, so so he, he has back. to run back only for 12 weeks approximately, from June 14th until September 17th. So he's, a, he's a teacher, uh, and he's a tough teacher. He's balancing with the stick. The, you remember the, the great choreographer? Do it again, do it again, <laughs> do it again. And you're like, I did it again. It's perfect. No, it's not. You could do better. You know, he's he's a hard teacher. He's tough love, but you learn from him like no other person. And if you work with him, you become a force to be reckoned with. Good. See, Saturn can only visit you two or three times in your life. If you live to be 87, you have three. But if you don't, then you only have two visits. So because he comes so infrequently, because mm. it's two and a half years for every 29 years, he has to make his teaching so indelible that you don't forget it and that you carry it with you until he has time to come back and tutor you again and refresh your course. Nice. Okay. They say the first 29 years is the hardest because he goes into each house for the first time in your chart. That's how long it takes to go around the sun. Now, could you explain this a little bit? Because so the, there's a that Saturn, 29 years old, the Saturn, Saturn return. return, it returns to where it was at birth. So you've done Saturn in every house, and now you're truly mature. Not 21, not 18. <laughs> Astrologer's like, 21? He hasn't gone all the way around the sun. So you've learned things, and you're supposed to, at 29, commit yourself to something big. Mm -hmm. like a marriage, a baby, a business, a house, a book, 
something that you can't undo because the whole point is to give your life structure. Uh, and that will happen again in another 29 years. Yeah. So you don't want to wanna, you don't want to miss the opportunity to create a foundation mm -hmm. when Saturn's in your sign because if you do it's a little harder when you get older mm -hmm. because then you have to learn it all over again and you know you do see people not doing anything at 29 and no you're supposed to commit to something big is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience about the importance of astrology or just how to view astrology, how well, to take it on Well, lots of people um, have never had any uh, any contact with it. Mm -hmm. So I say read my column for six months, or if you, if you feel it's a, I, I write in a, a warm, engaging style, I think. Yeah. But if you find it a little too much, then read the um, summaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not an evangelist. If you don't want to have astrology in your life, you can live very happily. I feel I can up your success rate fourfold, I can, but if you listen to me and act when I tell you to act and hold back when I tell you to ask questions and not forge forward, um, I think you can find your talents, I think you can have an array of options of what to develop if you'd like to, um, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can always still learn mm -hmm. and grow and go back to school or try something new, uh, don't Rachel profile if you've had trouble with one sign, don't think it'll always be that sign. It could be a transiting planet that caused that. Keep an open mind. I write one book for each person that orders it, 65 pages, and it takes two weeks. You never have to buy it again because your chart's not going to change. That's your chart for life. Yeah. I have those books, my personal horoscope, and um, I also have an app Mm -hmm. on, on the Apple apps. Just put in Susan Miller or Astrology Zone and it's right up. It's free and then if you want the really juicy stuff, <laughs> you can try it out for $5 for one month, $13 for three months, or $49 for the whole year. I'm um, Actually, most people buy the whole year and are loving it and that makes me so happy because I can do more than So you have the Astrology Zone which is for free. Mm -hmm. You have, you do do personalized reports. Yeah, the personalized books. Yes, my mm -hmm. personal horoscope. They're fifty dollars plus shipping. And then the, the apps, apps that are ever you Yeah, evolving. and you can have the free one if you want, you know. It and I have to and know. I just started my Spanish site. The entire site is in Spanish, just like astrology zone. It's a mirror mm -hmm. H T T P mm -hmm. colon slash slash E like Edward S like Susan dot Susan Miller dot com. So um at Astrology Zone on Twitter and Susan Miller on Facebook and stop by and post something and uh, you know and I'll address it either there or in my next column. Like if you're confused about something I need to know it. Thank you and so thank so you. much. I so appreciate it and so grateful that you are here as uh, you know, giving us the gift of interpreting. Thank you. What's going on in the universe? I'm sure you your make listeners will have questions. I hope they write to you and I can help. And that's all from me and that's Andrew Ram for Conscious Life News. Thank you.